Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. This session is all about the deadlock recovery methods. Though these methods are not so promising, but still you should be knowing uh, how these methods are used to recover from deadlock. So the first one is recovery through preemption or taking away the resource from the processes. But normally it is not allowed or not possible to take away a allocated resource from the process, but still without a process getting noticed, the resources can be taken away from the process. So the, for this particular method, actually human intervention is required. For example, just I will tell you, if there are two processes P1 and P2, P1 and P2 are making use of one resource called as printer, fine. So if the pages of pro the process P1 are getting printed, meanwhile if the operator just takes away or assign this printer to P2, okay. So the operator is trying to take away the printer from P1 and starts printing the pages of P2. Once the P2 gets completed, it is once again, uh, this printer is assigned to P1. Moreover, it also depends on what type of resource are you trying to preempt from a uh, process. So recovery through a rollback. Recovery through rollback is in the system, suppose if you have um, process P1, okay. Process P1 is requesting for some resources process P2 comes into the system, process P2 is also making some uh, request for the resources, P3 comes into the system, P3 is making a request uh, in, the, in the system and if you see that there is a deadlock happening at this point, then try to roll back, roll back means whatever request P3 is demanding, do not satisfy the request for is or do not allocate the resources for the P3. So that if you are doing this, P2 can complete its job okay, and P2 will release the resources and then P1 can complete its job. In this situation, suppose after deallocating the resources from P3, still if you feel that there is a deadlock occurring, then carry out the same procedure for P2, deallocate the resources from P2 and see that whether the system will result in deadlock free. Always to the previous point you have to move so that and try to see that there should not be any deadlock in the system. Moreover, at this point you have to be very carefully in selecting the processes. Also see that the processes do not get starved. Starvation should not happen. Because in this method you are going to deallocate the process from the deallocate the processes uh, sorry in this method you are deallocating or you are releasing or you are making the resources um, to be released from the processes. So you are selecting one particular process. Meanwhile while selecting that process you have to also see that how much percentage of job that process has completed. So Releasing the resources when a process is almost about to complete its job is a very costly affair in the system. You are not supposed to do that. A process which is initially in the beginning of its execution, you can choose that process to what to make that process release the resources. And also when you are carrying out this method, see that one particular process is not always chosen okay, to uh, make the system uh, become from deadlock free. Otherwise that process will never be uh, completing its job. So it will always be what waiting and it we say that there is a starvation occurring in the system. That also you should see that you are not going to penalize any one particular process all the time in the system. So this is what is a uh, rollback through recovery and then you have recovery through killing process. Killing process is also what once again keep in mind that whenever you kill a process see that how much percentage of job a process has completed. Normally there are two ways here. First you can kill the entire all the processes. All the processes if you try to kill what does it mean? All the processes in the system are killed. Once you kill all the processes in the system, the reason for killing all the processes is the processes have resulted in a deadlock in the system Okay, because they are not able to complete the job better to kill all the process and start reassigning the resources again so that you will see that there should not be any deadlock in the system. So we say in that manner also we can recover. Otherwise you have kill the process one by one. One by one is terminate one process first okay, and then see whether the dead system becomes deadlock free. So why to kill all the processes unnecessarily just by killing one process also if you are able to make the system deadlock free then the other processes can complete their execution. So but to I, I, you have to identify that process in a very intelligent manner. See normally I will tell you one simple example if there is one process P1, P1 is requesting for printer okay. Actually pr printer is assigned to process P1 and it is requesting for plotter. There is another process called P2. 
P2 is assigned with plotter, okay, but it is requesting for printer. There is one more process P3, okay. The system is having two instances, more than one instance of the printer. P3 is uh, assigned with one instance of the printer. P3 is also assigned with one instance of the plotter, okay. So, this P3 which is holding one instance of printer and one instance of plotter, if this process is killed, then this printer becomes available, this plot plotter becomes available. So, that this plotter can be what? Assigned it to this P1, printer can be assigned it to this P2 and P1 and P2 can complete their job. This way in a very intelligent manner, the process to be killed has to be selected. Normally, this is what it will happen if a system is having Suppose some P1, P2, P3, some 10 processes you just assume. There is one process which is holding maximum instances of all kinds of resources. So, that particular process is itself making all the other processes to wait. So, better to kill that process. Once you kill that process, all the resources become available. And all those resources will be what allocated to the different processes which are requesting. And the rest of the processes can complete their job. So, this is how you have to carry out what? the recovery through killing the process method. This is all about the deadlock recovery methods. So, hope you find this session useful. If you find it useful, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.